already know what congruent figures are. These are congruent triangles, and we're very interested in those. So these are congruent triangles because they're the same shape. I can see that they're the same shape because all the angles match up, 60, 50, 70, 60, 50, 70, and all the sides match up, 4.5, 3, 5.4, 4.5, 3, 5.4. They must be the same shape and the same size. We can write this in the following way. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. It's important to put our little triangle shape here. Uh, and you say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. It's important that you're matching up your symbols. So A is on the 60 degree, X is on the 60 degree, so A and X match up. B and Y match up 50 and 50, and C and Z match up 70 and 70. Now the deal here is that we've been given six pieces of information to find these congruent triangles. We know three side lengths and we know three angles. That is way too much information. You don't need to know all of that to figure out that two triangles are exactly the same. So there are actually called four different tests for congruence. The first one is really straightforward. If you know the lengths of all three sides match up, that's enough information. You don't need to know anything about the angles at all. So this is called the side, side, side test, the SSS test. So let's zoom in on that. The SSS test, if all of the sides are the same length. And you can see here we have these triangles, no information about the angles, but we do know it's got this 3, 4, 5 going on, this 3, 4, 5 going on. So this side equals this side, this side equals this side, this side equals this side. Therefore, the triangles are congruent because of the SSS rule. Now this working, super important, particularly putting your coded reason here, why you think that's true. All right, so three to go. Now the next one here is called the SAS rule. If you know two sides and what's called the included angle, you'll know that those triangles are congruent. Let's check this out and zoom in on it so we can see. You can see here that we have a length three and a length three. So we're matching those two lengths together. You can see that we have a length here 9 and a length here 9. So we have the S and the S, right? Two sides that match up. We weren't told this third one, but it doesn't matter because we were told the included angle. See the angle between these two sides, the angle between these two sides. That's why we call this the SAS rule because the angle needs to be between the two sides. The angle needs to be between the two sides. So here we say that AC equals EG, AC equals EG. We say that angle ACB equals or equals angle uh, EGF. And we say that BC, side BC, equals side FG. And therefore, we can say that those two triangles are congruent because of the SAS rule. So that's two down, two to go. Now, so far, we had three sides here. We had two sides and one angle here. This time, we're only going to have one side. But with one side, we're going to need to know two angles. So it's called the uh, ASS rule. Let's get on on this one. All right. Now, the AAS rule says that if you know two angles and one side are congruent, that's going to be enough information. So if we zoom in on our question, we can see we can match up angle ABC, the 60 degree angle, with angle LMN, LMN, the 60 degree angle. We can match up angle ACB with angle LNM, 70 degrees, 70 degrees. And we can match up side AB with side LM. All right, so therefore these are congruent because of the AAS rule. Now, I said in the previous example that this was called the SAS rule and the A had to be in the middle. There's no, no criteria here for where the two angles and the side need to be. As long as you know two angles and any of the sides, that's enough information. The order AAS, it could be ASA, it could be SAA, it really doesn't matter, but you always state it as AAS. The last rule here only exists for a certain type of triangle, and that is right angle triangles. It is the RHS rule. So if you have a right angle, and if you know the hypotenuse, that's the longest side, if you know the right angle and the hypotenuse are there, um, all you need is one more side and you're done. So right angle, R, hypotenuse, H, and another side, S. Let's take a look at this shape here. 
we can see that oh there's a right angle great we can see that the hypotenuses the longest sides um, the ones that are opposite the right angle they're equal as well they're both 12 and finally we can see some other side 5 and 5 they add up they are congruent so the shape itself is tri congruent tri congruent Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ because of the RHS rule. That leaves us with four, four, one, two, three, four um, congruence rules. And you need to learn those off by heart. You need to know that they all exist and you need to be able to look at two triangles and say, this is the rule I'm going to use to figure out whether these are congruent or prove that these are congruent. So that's it for this video. In the next one, I'm going to do a bunch of worked examples on congruent 